what if we had something like, uh, if we wanted to prove that sine of 10 times theta was equal to 2 times the sine of 5 theta uh, times the cosine of 5 theta. How would we do that? Well, the first thing we notice is that we have sine of 10 theta, um, but the double angle only applies if you have sine of 2 times an angle. So you need to rewrite this to fit that situation. So we have sine of 2 times 5 theta. This is the, the double angle. The angle is 5 theta, you're doubling it like this. You have to make it fit that form. So 2 times whatever your angle is, you just write it as 2 times the sine of the angle times the cosine of the angle. So in this case, we'll write it as 2 times the sine of the angle, in this case it's 5 theta, times the cosine of the same angle, which is 5 theta. And this exactly matches what we have here. 2 times sine, 5 theta, cosine, 5 theta. Simple problem, but important result. Now what if you have cosecant of 2 times u, and you want to show that this is equal to 1 half secant u times cosecant u. Now the first thing you notice is we don't have any double angle formulas that deal with cosecant. So you're thinking, well I'm, I'm in trouble. But then you realize also that you know the trig rainbow. I can turn this cosecant into something. So I would just write it down, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. Cosecant goes with sine. So I can rewrite this whole thing since uh, they go with each other like that. The cosecant is 1 over the sine function. So this basically reduces to 1 over sine of 2u because the argument carries down with it. Now we have a double angle, right? We have a double angle here which is equal to 2 times the sine of the angle times the cosine of the angle. So we have 1 over, and then we have 2 times the sine of, what is the angle? U times cosine of the same angle, U. Now we're getting somewhere because we see that 1 over sine corresponds to, to cosecant. 1 over cosine corresponds to secant. So what we have here is exactly what we wanted. We have 1 half that comes from this. 1 over sine gives us the cosecant u. 1 over cosine gives us the secant of u. And of course this is exactly equal to 1 half secant u cosecant u, which is exactly what we're trying to reach, which is 1 half secant u cosecant u. The last statement should always be a statement of equality left to right so that your teacher can go and figure out, okay, he knew what he was doing. He worked, he or she worked on the left-hand side and made it equal to the right-hand side.